On Sunday evening, when other people were settling in and getting ready to start a new work week, I walked my mixed breed hound, Daisy, to relax after finishing up my busy week. An unpleasant waft of smoke reached me, most likely from a fire pit in someone's backyard, I supposed. As an event planner, I often worked when others didn't. I had just finished a major convention for the Federation of Pharmacists. They had been lovely to work with, and their exhibits were fascinating. It was a major convention, and I was ready for some downtime. The sun had set in Old Town, Alexandria, Virginia, but the temperature was perfect for sleeveless attire. The balmy air made me feel summery and carefree. Lights on porches and front doors gleamed on federal-style homes, many of which had been built in the 1800s. Now and then, I caught a glimpse of light strung over a backyard and the sound of laughter. We had no destination in mind. Mostly, I needed to stretch and unwind, and Daisy needed to get outside and sniff the world. We ambled along until I saw a blaze. In the seconds that it took me to realize that it arose inside a car, it quadrupled in size. I reached for my phone and called 911. A car is on fire! I gave the operator the name of the street and the closest cross street. Hurry! The flames have moved from the front seat to the back! I felt completely helpless. There wasn't a thing I could do about it. Although we were a good distance away, Daisy leaned against my legs, as if it scared her too. Sirens sounded louder than normal in the quiet night. They passed us and clanged to a stop. In minutes, firefighters had the flames under control. One of the firemen recognized me and strode over. I hear you called in the fire? Yes. It was small, and then, whoosh, it grew so fast. He nodded. Yeah, car fires will do that. Did you see anyone get out of the car? No. His question worried me. I hope there wasn't anyone inside. We don't think so. We'll open the trunk and have a look as soon as it cools off. I shuddered to even imagine that possibility. I thanked him for responding so quickly and said good night. Daisy and I headed for home. On Monday morning, my best friend and across-the-street neighbor, Nina Reed Norwood, and I sat in my garden, drinking tea and eating healthy avocado and egg toast for breakfast. Birds sang overhead in the trees. Daisy and Nina's tiny fluffball, Muppet, followed the trails of squirrels with their noses, and the temperature was a blissful 80 degrees. A perfect summer morning in Old Town. We both noticed when Daisy's ears perked up, and she ran toward the side of my house. Two minutes later, Natasha Smith, who preferred to be known by her first name, like Martha and Cher, emerged around the corner and collapsed on one of the cast iron chairs at my outdoor table. With all the drama of an old-timey actress, she threw the back of her hand against her forehead and moaned, Mom is getting married! Wanda? I didn't even know she was seeing anyone, I said. Can you believe it? My mother is getting married for the second time, while I haven't managed to walk down the aisle once. I'm so depressed.